Hi, my name is Natasha, and in this video, I'll demonstrate how you can write a high-scoring OET letter with some effective tips and tricks. So, this is what the instructions on your exam paper look like. As you can see from the introduction, in the exam, you have five minutes for reading and another 40 minutes to complete your letter. You can also see that you will be writing this letter as a general practitioner, and your patient has chronic back pain. Now here's an important tip. Before reading the rest of the notes, go straight to the end of the exam paper and look at the writing task. This is because we need to understand who we're writing to and keep that in mind before reading the details of the case. So before we look at how to approach this task, don't forget to click that subscribe button. So the task says, using the information in the case notes, write a letter of referral to Ms. Carter a consultant physiotherapist summarizing your assessment and outlining your recommended management plan for Mr. Smith's chronic back pain. Then we have the address that we'll put at the start of the letter. And this last part is always the same. It reminds us to write in full sentences, not in note form, and to use a conventional letter format. The reader of the letter is Miss Carter, who is a physiotherapist and we'll need to tell her about the management plan for this patient. Once you understand who you're writing to, keep that in mind while reading the rest of the case notes. This will help you select relevant information and organize it logically. And this is what we'll do next. Start reading the notes from the beginning to understand this patient's condition and what we'll ask the physiotherapist to do. So here we've got today's date, the patient's name and his date of birth. We'll put these details into the subject line of our letter. Then here we have the patient's social background. He's single, his job is an office manager, he sits a lot, doesn't do much exercise, and he used to smoke. While we're reading these details, we have to make some decisions. Are we going to include all of these in our letter? The OET is testing your ability to read selectively and to keep in mind what the reader needs to know. Let's look at the notes again and make those decisions. The physiotherapist we're writing to does not need to know that the patient is single. His relationship status is not relevant to this case as it doesn't impact his condition or recovery. The patient sits a lot at work, doesn't do much, and has poor posture. All of these are relevant because of the condition, back pain. The physiotherapist needs to know this. But smoking isn't relevant to back pain. The medical history, hypertension, diabetes, and the medications are also not relevant because the person we're writing to will not need those details to do her job. The last medication, however, is useful. It's pain relief, which is relevant for the condition, so we'll keep it. Remember, you must read the case notes selectively, identifying any details that are not relevant because you should only choose to include appropriate information. So we must read with overall understanding of what the letter should focus on. Let's continue reading the notes. Under history of present illness, we read that the patient has had this pain for 12 months and there's some description of the pain. This, of course, is important to include in our letter. Now see how this information here is presented in note form? This means you're not reading full sentences but phrases and you can also see symbols like this arrow pointing up. The arrow means the pain increases with prolonged sitting or standing. In your letter, this will need to be changed into a complete sentence. This is important to remember as some candidates simply copy the phrases from the case notes, forgetting that your language is being assessed. Language means your grammar, sentence structure, vocabulary, spelling, and punctuation. To check that you're writing grammatically complete sentences, pay attention to the subject and the verb in your sentences. If a subject or verb is missing, it's not a sentence. A few more details to read here. Under investigations, we can see that an x-ray was performed and the results are, of course, important for the physio to know. However, A1C is not relevant. Everything under assessment is repeated information. We already know that the reason for this referral is chronic back pain. We also already know the patient's medical history 
and we've decided that it's irrelevant. So on test day, you'll spend five minutes reading the case notes and thinking about what's relevant and what's irrelevant for the person you're writing to. This is a very important decision because it will affect the assessment of the content of your letter. Let's finish reading the notes. The plan is the most important part of these notes because our task, as you can see here, is to outline the recommended management plan. Great, we've now analyzed the case notes. If you'd like an extra set of these that you can use to practice and write your own letter, click the link in the description. There, you can download a free PDF containing a new set of case notes. You'll also get a copy of the sample letter from this video. So let's go ahead and see how you could write a letter to address this task. We start by copying the address from the writing task and arranging it in the top left corner of the letter. Notice that each separate part of the address is on a new line. First, the name of the person you're writing to, the next line, the name of the clinic, then the street address and the town or suburb. Notice also how there are no punctuation marks in this format in the letter. The next thing to write is the date. In the exam, the date will be included in your case notes. You can use either British or American standard format. In the British format, we put the day before the month, while the American format starts with the month. Both are acceptable, but you need to be consistent throughout your letter. This means that if you write a few dates, you need to use the same format for all of them. So here the date is 1709-2023. The day, month, and year are separated by slashes. This is the most commonly used separator in the all numeric date format. You can also use a hyphen or a full stop, but a forward slash is most common. Now, if you're writing out the date in words, use the format day, month, year with no commas, just like in your case notes here. I want to emphasize again that it's important to be consistent. Don't mix and match different formats. For example, in American English, there's a full stop after abbreviated titles, Mr., Mrs., Doctor. In British English, there's no full stop after Mr., Mrs., or Doctor. You can use either American or British standard, but it has to be the same throughout your letter. Let's continue. I'm going to start with the subject line. RE stands for regarding. The letter R in RE is capital and E is lowercase. After RE, you need to use a colon. Now, because the patient is an adult, I need to use a title, Mr. or Miss or Mrs. in front of the name. After the name, we put a comma and then the age or the date of birth, whatever is in your case notes. After the subject, we skip a line again before writing the salutation. We use the formal salutation of dear and the recipient's title and surname. We're now ready to write the body of the letter. Just a few words about names. Many people make mistakes when copying names from the case notes, and that's an easily avoidable way to lose marks. So pay attention to your material and copy carefully. Names of places in the address, the doctor's name, and the patient's name. Notice also if the patient is male or female and pay attention to titles, Mr. or Miss. The first sentence in your letter is the purpose of writing. It tells your reader why you're writing to them. It should be concise and clear. So all together, the first sentence says, I am writing to refer Mr. John Smith, who has chronic lower back pain for physiotherapy and advice on lifestyle modifications. Notice that we use a formal register. For example, we use I am rather than the contraction I'm and we avoid informal punctuation such as exclamation marks. After you've written your short and clear first sentence, you skip a line and start the first body paragraph. Here we need to make a decision about organizing the relevant information in a logical way, as if you're telling a story. In OET letters, the story starts when the patient first presents with a problem, when they see the doctor about this condition for the first time, or if they're hospitalized for it. So let's have a look where we start our story about Mr. Smith. The main story in our case notes is found in this section, history of present illness. So that's where we need to start. Mr. Smith has had fluctuating back pain for 12 months. 
He describes the pain as dull and aching, of moderate intensity, mainly in the lumbar region. The pain is aggravated when sitting or standing for long periods, but does not radiate to the lower limbs. I also want to add the pain medication he has been using. This is from Current Medications, but it's part of the main story, so I'm adding it to the paragraph. Mr. Smith has been taking OTC pain relievers, which have not been effective. So all of this information is the reason the patient presented to the clinic. It's all related. It's part of the same main story, so this is a good paragraph focusing on one thing. Now that the main issue is described, I need to check the case notes to find the next logical detail to include. The next important part is investigations. In this section in the notes, only one line is relevant, so I'm using it to start my next paragraph. An x-ray of the lumbar spine showed mild degenerative changes in the vertebrae. Notice that it's a full sentence as it has the verb showed. There's other relevant information we can include in this paragraph. Mr. Smith has no history of trauma or recent heavy lifting. As an office manager, he sits for most of his time at work and generally has a sedentary lifestyle. Notice that these details come from different sections in the case notes, but they are all relevant to this paragraph. We've now explained everything that's relevant to the patient's condition and useful to the reader of this letter. Remember that our task is to outline the management plan for this patient's back pain. This means that we need to use most of the details mentioned in that section of the case notes. Here's the management plan, and our task is to choose the details that the physiotherapist needs to do her job. These useful details include exercises, posture correction, advice on active lifestyle, ergonomic assessment, anti-inflammatory medication, diet, the next appointment, and a pain clinic if these measures don't work. And here's how I've arranged those details in the letter. Mr. Smith's management plan will comprise physiotherapy and posture correction, as well as an appropriate diet to promote weight loss. His workplace will be ergonomically assessed for any necessary modifications. A short course of NSAID will be considered and a future referral to the pain clinic might be necessary if the symptoms persist despite conservative management. A follow-up appointment is scheduled in four weeks' time. The final body paragraph in our letter should be phrased as an explicit request. We've already outlined the management plan, but in the last paragraph, we want to say very clearly what we expect the specialist to do for the patient. This paragraph must use polite and formal language. Let's have a look. A polite and formal way to start the request is this. I would be grateful if you could. This is a grammatical structure called the second conditional, and it's a polite way to ask somebody to do something. The second part of this sentence is to state very clearly what I want the reader to do. So I write, I would be grateful if you could commence a physiotherapy program for Mr. Smith with appointments twice a week for the next month. In addition, Please advise him on better posture for both standing and sitting, as well as adopting a more active lifestyle. These are the two parts of the actual request, to start physiotherapy and to provide advice on posture and lifestyle. Now, after you've written your request paragraph, you're almost done. The last sentence of your letter will always be the same. You want to tell the reader that they can contact you if they have any questions. Make sure to put this sentence on a new line, like a sentence paragraph. Here it is. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Finally, we need to sign off. You need a formal closing, such as, yours sincerely. On the next line, you write, doctor. You don't need to include your name. And there you have it. Your OET letter is done. As always, when you finish your writing, don't forget to reread and check everything carefully. You will find typos, spelling mistakes, and other problems, and it's better if you correct those problems before the examiner finds them. Remember, you can download that sample letter and a new set of case notes for free by clicking the link in the description. As always, if you need access to more practice materials or want feedback on your writing, 
sign up for an OET course at e2testprep.com. Good luck.